So let's quickly take a look at some of the major arteries found within our circulatory system. And let's begin within the left ventricle of the heart. So when the left ventricle of the heart contracts, it pumps all that blood into the largest artery of the body known as our aorta. Now we have different segments of the aorta and the segment of the aorta that actually extends from the left ventricle and moves upward is known as our ascending aorta and this is shown in red as it travels right over to this location here. Now at the beginning portion of our ascending aorta we have branching taking place and we form two smaller arteries given by 1A. So these arteries right here are the left and the right coronary arteries and these bring oxygenated and nutrient filled blood to the cells of our heart. Now, if we follow the ascending aorta, eventually we get to this arch, and this arch is commonly known as our aortic arch. Now, aortic arch contains three important branching points. We have one on the left side, one on the right side, and one in the middle. So we have the left side of the body and the right side of the body. So let's begin with our leftmost branch, labeled as 2A. This is known as our left subclavian artery. Now, if we follow the left subclavian artery, it extends all the way to the left shoulder, the left arm, and the left hand. So the left subclavian artery brings oxygen to these parts of our body. Now at this particular intersection point we see that the left subclavian artery actually branches. So it branches and it forms this artery known as the left vertebral artery that goes to our head portion of the body. It also extends many times, it permeates many times within our shoulder and arm portion as shown. And that is to ensure that all the blood gets to the cells of our left shoulder and our left arm. Now, what about the middle branching point on the arch? This right here, labeled as 2B, is known as our left common carotid artery, and this artery brings our oxygenated blood filled with nutrients to the head of our body. For example, the thyroid and the parathyroid glands, these organs receive blood from this common carotid artery. Now, what about the final branching point given by 2C? This is called the branchiocephalic artery. Now, the branchiocephalic artery travels a short distance before it actually branches itself and it branches at this particular location. At this location, it forms two important arteries. This artery is known as our right common carotid artery. So this one is the right common carotid artery. So just like we have a left common carotid artery, we also have a right common common carotid artery. Now this other one, this one right here, that essentially extends, continues and extends all the way into the right arm is known as the right subclavian artery. So just like we have a left subclavian artery, we also have a right subclavian artery that extends into the right shoulder and into the right arm and the right hand of our body. Now in the same way that we have this splitting taking place and we form our left vertebral artery, we also form the right vertebral artery. So this is the right vertebral artery right here. So we have symmetry taking place. Now the subclavian artery, the common carotid artery, this vertebral artery all bring our oxygenated and nutrient filled blood to the organs and tissues found in the upper portion of our body, in the head portion, the neck region, the shoulders, as well as our arms. And the coronary arteries bring our blood to the heart of our body. 
Now let's continue onwards. So we have the ascending portion of the aorta. We also have this aortic arch. Now when the arch circles backwards, it then basically extends in the back of the heart and all the way to our pelvic portion of the body. So remember this chest portion of the body is known as our thoracic region. And this is the abdomen portion. This is our abdominal region. Now, as our aorta actually extends downward, we call that portion the descending aorta. And we can break down the descending aorta into two regions. We have the thoracic descending aorta and we have the abdominal descending aorta. And basically, the aorta extends and branches many times as we go down our body. And these branches form smaller arteries eventually form arterioles and then capillaries and these capillaries are found within the organs and tissues found within the thoracic and within the uh, abdomen portion of our body. Now eventually when we get down to our pelvic region the descending aorta and more specifically our abdominal descending aorta actually splits and the and, and this splitting takes place in the following region. So these two arteries are called the common iliac arteries. So we have a left common iliac artery and a right common iliac artery and as they extend down they split many more times. For example, they split in the following location and when they split here, they become the external and the internal iliac arteries. So these here are the external iliac arteries and these smaller ones are the internal iliac arteries. And these common iliac arteries deliver oxygenated and nutrient filled blood to the leg portion of our body to our right and our our left leg. So these are some of the major arteries that are found within our arterial circulation system. Now of course we have many more arteries that we haven't actually shown. For example we have our pulmonary artery. So our right ventricle when it actually contracts it forces all that deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary trunk this section here extends into our left and our right pulmonary artery and those arteries carry deoxygenated blood to the left lung and the right lung of our body and that is where we actually oxygenate our blood and the blood eventually returns via the pulmonary veins to the left atrium where then it moves into the left ventricle and it continues over and creates that same cycle that we spoke about.